Hey everybody, uh, this is a response video to Drew's uh, 10 pen collection logic that he put together as uh, the recent pen cast uh, from the Goulet pen cast. Uh, he made some really good points, so I wanted to kind of walk through what he mentioned in his 10 pens, uh, but also give some examples that I have in my collection, and then I have a few caveats or um, uh, qualms, qualms, critiques of his uh, recommendations or his his categories. So we're going to run through his 10. Uh, one uh, was high capacity. This is something to journal with. This could be a piston or a vacuum filler. Um, a good example in my collection is the Twisby Diamond 580, a uh, huge ink capacity, great everyday, you know, journaling, big capacity pen. So check mark, we have that one. Um, let's line them up this way. So number one. Number two, similar, he, he's saying similarly, high capacity, but something with a, a fun nib, something to show off the ink. So uh, this one, this is a Jinhao 9019, and it does have a huge converter on this. Um, you can fit basically a full Goulet uh, sample vial in this pen, just about. Uh, so that is a lot of ink, and it's great. I Now, I don't have it in a stub or in a broad. I have it in a medium, but it's plenty juicy. It shows off the ink capacity, or sorry, the ink properties. So I feel like it fits that bill. So check mark for number two. Um, also, so number three, he says a kakimori, like a dip nib, something for ink testing. Uh, Brian mentioned glass. Drew kind of scoffed at glass as being inferior. I, he's probably right. I don't have a kakimori, but I do have a glass, a glass pen for ink testing. So check mark on number three. Number four, a uh, pocket pen. Well, we have that here. This is the uh, Pilot Elite, uh, also known as the E95S. Great pen to throw in your pocket, very reliable. Um, now, it's more of a luxury pocket pen. You wouldn't want to, you know, put this in your cargo shorts necessarily when you're putting up a carport. Uh, but it is a pocket pen, so I feel like it checks that box. Um, I would also add that this, you know, go, a gold nib isn't necessarily part of his list, but there is a soft nib or something with bounce. So this could also count toward that, but uh, we'll get there. Uh, number five, an expendable pen, something you're not afraid of getting damaged or lending. Uh, I think the, uh, the Platinum Preppy is a great example always wanted to try Bay State Blue. I just didn't want to stain a pen or ruin a pen uh, or dedicate a Bay State to a pen forever. So a blue Platinum Preppy was a great choice. Um, I would have no problems lending this to somebody, uh, carrying it around, letting it get beat up. So I feel like that's taken care of. Uh, number six is a fancy pen. You want to sign a mortgage statement. You want to sign wedding certificate, document, something important. Um, I bought this pen for myself as a Father's Day present. Uh, as my first real fountain pen, I went to a store. This is a uh, Faber-Castell Ambition with the rhombus design. And I feel like it fits that. It's not gold, a gold nib, but it is a, definitely a fancy pen. This is uh, the most I've paid for a pen, which it's uh, $100. Uh, so, yeah, this would be a great pen for something like that. And I felt like it was a good way to kick off um, my collection. And I still really like that pen. So, fancy pen. Check. Uh, number seven, a soft nib. Something with bounce. Something fun to write with. So this could be a flex pen, this could be something with a gold nib, something that's got a good bounce. 
Uh, I feel like the E95S slash Elite, I feel like that does. Uh, I'm also going to, you know, the, the fun is the biggest part I'm going to extract from this category. And I'm going to, I'm going to throw in uh, Jin Hao 82. These are, you know, the highly inspired by the Sailor Pro Gear, but you can modify these. You can really take these apart, Frankenstein these pens and put different finials. There's so many uh, fun ways that you can utilize the 82s and they're so cheap. Uh, so I would say this is a great element to include in the collection. And I'm really focusing in on the word fun for number seven. So number eight, a Japanese extra fine. Now, Drew was talking about specifically like poor quality paper. Uh, and he had talked about like a vanishing point, something extra fine. Uh, I'm going to agree and say extra fine is probably handy for that. And I'm going to say that this uh, Moon Man uh, Majon A1 is great for that. It's got the click. So you've got the quick draw, which is a great addition for variety in your collection and the ability to use extra fine. Uh, it's going to work great for lower quality paper. Quick draw pen. This is number nine. Quick draw. Something for notes, journaling, uh, kind of an everyday quick draw. So I feel like a few of these pens already fit that bill. Um, just because it fits a different category doesn't mean it cross doesn't cross over. But I feel like a really good addition is, uh, and this is a Goulet exclusive, this black Lamy Vista. And it is. It's the, the snap cap, which is quick draw. It's got a really nice nib, just smooth. Uh, I recommend the medium so you can see more of that ink coming out. Uh, this one, I find when it's inked up, I am reaching for it all the time. It's a quick draw. I love taking notes with it. So again, these others, there's crossover. But yes, the Lamy Vista fits that bill for me as number nine, the everyday quick draw pen. And then number 10, uh, Drew said the Retro 51 Rollerball. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a Retro 51. I don't have a go-to roller ball. I've got some G2 pilots around the house. Ultimately, though, I feel like you can still use a fountain pen, um, you know, on things just like we mentioned, an extra fine, uh, especially something with a click. You can easily get it out and sign things that, quote, a fountain pen shouldn't use. I... I really see fountain pens are totally fine for those. So I'm going to push back on number 10. Uh, but I will say part of, uh, part of my critique is also a 10 pen collection. I've only got nine out here right now. Really, I don't think is enough. I don't think there's enough variety in the colors or in the... Uh, the way that the grip feels, the way the materials look. So, you know, I, I just feel like the variety, if you're going for variety, you're gonna want more than 10. Uh, so we've got something like this uh, burgundy pen is just amazing to, you know, if you're in a burgundy mood or if you're in a, a clear mood or a chonky mood, uh, you know, you might have a day where you just want a different feel, a different grip. Uh, so I don't think the 10 pen collection really counts that in. So I'm going to push back, Drew, but I thought this was a great topic and I think your logic is great. I love the, uh, uh, just the, the way that your brain just comes up with these lists and, and throws them together. So thank you for that. Uh, if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe so you can see what is coming next. I appreciate it so much. We'll talk to you later.